All right, guys, tonight we got a very, very, I, I think is a time needed um, topic. We're talking about being parents, but especially fathers. All right. How to be a good father, the impact of not having a father in the house, how that affects the children. And considering everything that's going on in the world today, I think we, we need we need to talk about this. And I'm excited. We got Brother Aki uh, on us with, with, with us tonight. All right, All right. So let's get started. All right. My, as you probably well know, my name is Reverend Aki Ahim. And two things i like to, 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 to preface this with before we get started, so that everybody don't think this is a, 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 another one of those just kids without fathers things, that we're here to address not only boys not having fathers, but girls not having fathers right, also. Right, right, right. Yeah, because uh, let me read something to you. Just to, uh, it says, girls who live in fatherless homes have a 100% higher risk of suffering from obesity than girls who have fathers present. Teen girls with fatherless homes also have four times more likely to become mothers before the age of 20. Yeah, yeah. Also, want to make it understood, we're not trying to say that just because you have a father in the home gonna make you have a good life. Because all fathers aren't good. There's some fathers right. that do physical, mental, and sexually abuse their children. Right, so right. we, we want to make that plain. We're not trying to say just because you got a father in the home is a good deal. Right, if you got right. a good father, then you got a good deal. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know what? And I'd like to start this conversation with, with uh, 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 the insight from both of you. Because, you know, sometimes you have a father... And you're growing up with a father in the house, but the father's a drug addict or the father's an alcoholic or the father beats the wife um, uh, or the mother. Right. And um, so but but what sometimes what you see is the kid grows up to be a man and he's an alcoholic. He's a drug addict. He beats his wife. And then you, you also have situations where. Uh, the kid says, you know what? I'm not going to be that man. I'm going to be a better man. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to use drugs. I'm not going to hit my wife. I'm going to be a good father. Right. In your opinion, both of you guys, I like your insight. What do you think makes that change in a kid's mind where, as he's growing as a man? What do you think makes that change for them? I, I think it could be three three things. One the kid who chooses not to go down the negative road, maybe there's another male influence right. in, in his life. It could be a school teacher, a neighbor, maybe e even an uncle or an older brother or just, just a neighbor, a neighbor that he's seen that, you know what, not all fathers act this way. There's a, a, a father that, that um, you know, treats his kids good, who's a, who's a very good role model. Uh, another thing is may, maybe because of the painful experience, that person just makes up their mind, their resolve. Listen, I am not going to be this way. It's an internal thing. Mm -hmm. And also spiritually, I, I, I think, that, you know, uh, there's a spiritual component to that, that, you know, you may look at the creator or you may have uh, some type of religious hope that you, you read or you're tra being trained in that teaches you that you can overcome these things all right but but I, I really believe that at some point there has to be a positive role model for that child to say you know what i don't have to live this way or i don't have to be this way i i can do better brother aki what, what what do you say i agree with everything you said because the rule is 80 20. Yeah. <laughs> right yeah. 80 80 percent of us going to gravitate towards the negative right 20% towards the positive. Right, right. And that's one of the reasons 
big brothers and big sisters became a big uh, 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 movement in America because, of, like you said, you needed that positive role model. Sometimes the whole family was in the, the, the uncles, the cousins was in the drugs. So you had no nothing there. So you had to go outside of the family to get that role model, to get that uh, that that person that can step into your life and give you a, a a positive way to go. And that's the one thing I like about being a Christian because all through the Bible, we we pray to God the Father. So no matter how bad the Father is down here, we got a Father in heaven who who, who who's good to us, who looks good, who looks out for us, that loves us so much. He sacrificed his only begotten son that we might have life and not only have it, but have it more abundantly. So we do yeah. have something that someone to look to if nobody else. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what, Mike, I, I think also, you know, you and I talk a lot about passion and finding that passion in life. And I think when a person, say a teenager, finds something that they're truly passionate about and, and if that if they allow that passion to drive them, they can overcome a lot of hurdles in their life. You know, maybe they 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 love singing, painting, and they just make up in their mind that, listen, nothing is going to keep me away from this. And, and they pursue that and they're all able to overcome all those barriers. And then as they become adults and as they become uh, parents, hopefully it teaches them to teach their children the importance of passion. They become that role model and they say, well, listen, I know for you and I, I for me, you know, I, I love my father and he was a decent man in, in a lot of ways, but he was an alcoholic. He drank a lot. And, and I, you know, it was the alcoholism that finally did him in. But I always said, you know, my children will never see that. You know, yeah. uh, they may see me have a glass of wine here and there. I have a low tolerance for alcohol. So, you know, I, 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 I you know, it's impossible for me to get drunk because I fall asleep on, on, on less than half of a glass of wine, you know, <laughs> but, you know, like, like I may, you know, I have those images of my father and I said, I don't want my children to ever see me that way. Okay. And knowing how, what a negative, uh, how alcohol was used over the last 400 years to destroy our people. I just feel compelled not to contribute to that. Now, other people may feel differently about that, but alcoholism for indigenous people, uh, people from Puerto Rico, South Central America, here in the, in the United States was used to oppress them, uh, to break up the family home. And I, and I just made up my mind, listen, I, I'm, I'm not contributing to that. All right. Yeah. How, how about yourself, Mike? Well, you know, uh, one of the things that I wanted to uh, address is because I know your situation, Juan, uh, Sensei, and my situation, and neither of us uh, grew up with with good role models, so to speak, yeah, right? Yeah, at least, yeah. at least from our direct family. Right. And I, I think uh, 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 brother Aki could could attest to his his personal experience. I think that that at some point, the people that are constantly looking to grow, constantly right. looking to learn constantly looking to you know advance themselves are the people that say i need to be a better dad than my dad i need to be a better you know uh, uh example than i grew up looking at i know uh, one of the things that uh, brother aki kind of shocked me into was we were doing a video one time and brother aki said you know I, I, he was talking about his dad and he said, you know, my dad used to call me a dummy all the time, right? Now, he knew his dad loved him, and he knew his dad was, you know, had a, had a different format on how to educate him, I'm guessing, and I'll let Brother Aki speak on that himself. But I, I also know that that affects you. It affects a person I, right. when you're hearing, you know, mom say, oh, you're, you're an ugly kid, you're a fat kid. You're never going to amount to anything the same as that. You hear a dad saying, you're not going to grow up to be anything. Now, I remember hearing Elon Musk and Elon Musk, for those that don't know, he's a he's a massive billionaire, you know, just a, a genius when it comes right. to building things. He does the electronic cars. He's building a spaceship to go to Mars and all that. And he said that at 17, he left the house. And his father said, as he was walking out the door, you'll see, 
you're gonna you're gonna hit rock bottom and you're gonna be right back here begging for me to take you back and in his mind elon musk said that'll never happen and he turned wow. into into the man that he is today wow. but b- brother key i'd like for you to share you know your experiences growing up hearing that kind of negative feedback and and how that affected you and what was it that made you change that okay i'll call it the fred sanford syndrome right right yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know and 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 and, and I, I didn't well let me keep it where it is uh my father wasn't raised by his father so a lot of the stuff he he got he got it from the streets right right so he thought that was part of the way you did it but it a lot of but you're right mike it affected me in so many ways uh and, and i don't want to blame my father for the stuff i did it contributed to it i made the choices to do what i did you know it, it, it because of the if he didn't think i was worth anything or, or was a dummy even though i wasn't I, w- I was getting top grades in school i was playing sport i was doing all this stuff this that was something that he came up with like fred Seffer came up with right, right. but it, it led me into drinking led me into drugging led me into, into stealing it led me into being good at other things j- just to prove mm. in a negative way that i wasn't I would do so many crazy things just to see if I could get away with it, cause no dummy could. <laughs> no, okay. and, and 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 in the end, I can say this. Uh, and I did a video not too long ago about uh, my dad, my hero. He's not perfect, right? But he's my dad. Right now, right. he now it, that dummy thing was one of the negatives. But he taught me how to work on cars. He taught me how to work on houses. He taught me how to use my mind. He taught me black history. He taught me so many other things that help uh, offset that in some ways. Mm -hmm. But you know, he was my hero because if he had not, because he didn't have to stay there. He could have did, because it was nine children. He could have did like most of the kids I grew up in my neighborhood ran off and did what he had to do but he stuck around he raised it he took care of it he fed me and i have to give him credit mm, right. that one thing was against him but when i needed something like i was going on a pro i was on a patrol boy we was going on a camping trip i had never been on a camping trip in my life so i had no stuff for camping my dad went out and got me all brand new stuff for that camping trip because he wasn't gonna have it was he wasn't gonna have me going there less than anybody else so you know that that's a two-edged sword uh-huh. right, right. and again that's why i said he wasn't raised by his father so he didn't know how to be a father right right but because i was raised by him i had a very good idea of how to be a father even a better father you know i i, I want to jump on that because i was having this this uh t- discussion with uh, a student of mine who's going through a challenging period and i told him you know in our society Let's go from like 1900s and forward. Mm. Men are not taught how to be fathers as right. a rule. You know, wi- women or girls are, are taught how to be nurturing. They play house. They play with dolls. They think about marriage. And, and that's how they're raised. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think that's oppressive or anything like that. You know, but men, what are we taught usually? Sports, fight, drink. You know, you hang out. You work on, you know, you work on a car. Right. But how to be a real dad how to be a nurturing dad how to how to raise your ch- children to have great self-esteem to teach them really how to work correctly how to handle the problems of life in a positive way men are not taught that okay so as men if we don't take the initiative to learn those things you know we repeat the mistakes of our fathers because that's all we know all right, right. And, and that's why, you know, Michael, you and I, for many, many years, we've been into personal development. And I think that most men, they get pushed away from that. And, and I think it's important that men learn 
not how to not how to be a man out in the street. That's important. You got to learn how to deal with the street life and how to yes, deal with you that. You grew up there. You better yeah. learn. <laughs> you better. Right? But you got to know how to deal yeah. with the family. How to be a man inside the house. All right, mm. because it could be two different sets of skills. What works out in the business world, what works out in the street, might not work at home. You know, and and, and it's funny. There's a scripture uh, of. If you start from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to uh, chapter 6, verse 4, there's all instructions there for the husbands, the wife, and the children. Right, right. And, and it's very interesting, Michael, that this uh, Ephesians chapter 6, I think it's verse 4, says, fathers do not provoke your children That's to right. anger. Right. It's very interesting. But raise them in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. Because if, if you don't do that, they may lose heart. OK, mm. and I think that's a lot of wisdom in, in that that is saying, listen, you know, raise your children, discipline your children, but don't provoke them into that part where they become discouraged. You know, don't be abusive. Yeah. Don't right. be abusive. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me and, ask you guys. Uh -huh. uh, uh, and I want I want both of your inputs here. Uh, and before, if this is the first time you're watching this, hit the subscribe button. We got some great conversations. This is Born to Win conversation number 16. Be part of it. We want to hear your feedback. Give us a like. Give us some comments. And uh, we want to hear from you. But for both of you, and, and I want you to answer this first, uh, uh, Sensei. When you see, or first of all, do you see a difference between a kid that comes into your martial arts school that has a father in the family and one that doesn't? And, and the same question to you, uh, uh, Brother Aki. Do you see when, when you are, because you do a lot of counseling, you do a lot of big brother stuff, do you see a difference between a kid that doesn't have a father in the, in the immediate household as, as opposed to one? Sensei, what's your Yes, what's yes. Your uh, well, uh, all right. Let, 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 let me first say this. You know, there are some single moms out there that they're they're holding it down. Yeah, they're working. They're raising two or three kids, and they listen. They they do an amazing job. But when you got two parents in the house, a mother and a father, what I notice is the kids tend to be more disciplined, or if there is an issue, it's addressed more directly. And the kids with two parents tend to stay longer in the martial arts. Okay? Mm. That's something that I've noticed when there's a father present, because that father is an authority figure. And that child knows, listen, and, and, and listen, don't go again, all props to, to single moms. But that that father comes in, they watch, and they know, listen, daddy's watching. I have to be serious. I have to learn this. Because there's going to be consequences if they don't, mm. all right? And, and, and again, when you have two incomes in the house or you have that, that stability of a father there, I think it gives the child that, that confidence. Listen, I can do this. I, 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 I know I could be doing this for a long time. Daddy's bringing me. And, and listen, I got to give a lot of fathers in the last 15, 16 years, I've, I've seen some single dads who are holding it down some married fathers who they're constantly at the dojo making sure that their children train. Um, they come in and say, what do they need? They need, a, they need equipment. They need this. They need that. Just tell me what they need. Boom. It's there. And some of the single dads, because I got single dads who have custody of their kids. Yeah. All right. And, and it's amazing, man. These fathers are, uh, are just, they're in there. They're talking to their children they make sure they come to class on time consistently and, and i see a different level of responsibility and again i'm not putting any single mom down that that's not what this is about mm -hmm. but i see that you know the kids when they're not going to be in class they'll tend to call me or tell me ahead of time sensei i'm not going to be in class with for for such and such reason and um that, that's that's what i've noticed how about you brother rookie well, first of all, I've seen in a, in a two-family home where the mother was a disciplinarian. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. And, and I'm going to preface this again, in a home where there's a good dad. Right, right. Um, you can see the, the, the difference in the way the kids respond. Right. Now, 
when we when we was kids, our parents, especially the dads, taught us if we had to go to court, we had to get a haircut, put a suit on, we had yep. to look like something. And the judge would say, I can see somebody care about you, yep. so I'm going to give you another chance. Right, another right. kid come behind you, looking in your kind of way, talking in your kind of way, he end up getting sent away because don't, don't nobody care about you, so why should I, you know? So, you know, and... and, and, and that's a good and, point. Yeah, and it's it's a it, it's a very thin line sometimes between being disciplined and abusive. Right, 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 right. Because sometimes, like my dad used to think a book a, a whipping would cure the common cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know you and 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 and, and, you, and again you got the eighty twenty rule. Some some people will say, you know, because of what I've seen, I'm going to go against the grain. And, and, and but 80 percent is going to gravitate towards the negative. Like if, like you said, we're not just making this for dad or for the boys or dads here. Um, if a daughter grows up, see, and you brought this up, seeing the mother get beat by the dad, who do she go looking for? Same type Who of man. Yeah, she, I want me abusive. Mom had an abusive man. That must be what love is. That's what I'm going after. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and you know, it's it's you know what what I like what you said, brother, that your father taught you something about how to present yourself to the world, right? right? And I and I think you know, Michael, that's so important as fathers that we do that because our children have to deal with the outside world. There's a certain expectation. If you want to be successful in the business world, in the workplace, you just can't show up there any old way, speak any old way, dress any. There's a certain standard. And, and I know because of society, liberal mentality, oh, I should be able to just wear my hair any way I want and dress any way I want. But the reality is that it's not that way. When you go into a corporate place, there isn't a culture there. Yes. There's an expectation. And you have to teach your children about those things. You got to teach your son and daughter, especially your son, how to shake another man's hand. Right. That can make the difference between getting a job and not getting a job. All right. How, how to say yes, sir. No, sir. Thank you, man. How to treat a lady. How to open a door. How to, how to behave with a lady. You know, yes. um, how to work. How to have that self-reliance, that self-discipline. Um, you know, those are things that we need to teach our children, you know, how to take pride in your work. Because, again, th there's a lot of young men out there. And I, and I see it e even at my job when I talk to certain people. There are certain young men who take certain positions and their work, they work just enough to keep their job. There's no real pride there. Right. But when you talk to a young man who had a father present, there's a different level of work quality there. There's a, a pride there because they say, listen, you know, whatever I do, people are attaching to my name, to my family name. So they 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 make a better effort. What, what do right. you think, Mike? Well, you know, this is a perfect segue to uh, what I wanted to kind of uh, 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 discuss with you guys now. You see, personally for me, and you guys both touched on it, but personally for me, I think one of the greatest things that I want to convey to my family, my kids, and my growing generation, meaning my grandkids, is that I want them to be better than me, right? I want them to be more intelligent than me. I want them to be more successful than me. I want them to make more money than me. I want them to visit more places than I've visited throughout my lifetime, right? Uh, my daughter is, uh, is about to take a trip to Costa Rica for the second time, right? And she'd been to Thailand, and she'd been to Jamaica, and she's been almost, you know, all over the world, which is a beautiful thing. And, and just getting that different viewpoint, tasting different foods and swimming in different waters, that makes her better than me, right? She, and, and she's done a lot of other things. I mean, she's a real estate investor. She's a medical professional. And that, that elevates my generation, right? And that's, right, what, I'm, right. that's what I'm fully invested in. I'm, I'm invested in, in having my generation expand. Right. Because only I, I could do only so much. 
But the more that I get them to think about, I need to be better than than my dad. And my dad was better than, you know, and it's not a competition thing. It's just a growth thing. It's right, something right. about becoming bigger and better and stronger and more capable. So, uh, and, and we just got a few minutes here, guys, but I like uh, uh, Brother Akita first expand on that, on, on the question, what do you think is a good lesson that a father should pass on to his generation? And then Sensei, just you can follow up with that also. You have to love your children unconditionally. Mm. Because all the rest don't matter. If you don't, if I don't feel the love, you know why most kids want to do want to do the things to want to exceed? Because I I want to because my, my parents love me so much. I don't want to disappoint them. Right. It all comes back. And, and if, but if, if you don't love me, I don't feel your love, then it matters not. Right, but if right. I know you love me and I know if I do something, I'm going to disappoint you. I'm going to embarrass you or anything because of the love that you showed me. I can't do that. I won't do that. So in order for everything else to work, I got to hug on my kids. Like we weren't taught to be emotional, but right, you got to hug right, on them. You right, got to right. kiss on them. You got to love them and say, hey, right, you know what? Right. you're going to make mistakes. And the, I think one of the biggest mistakes we make as parents we don't let our children know that it's okay to make mistakes. I don't right. want you making them on a regular basis, but believe this, I'm not perfect. I made a bunch of mistakes, but you know what? If you could just learn from my mistakes, then you might not make as many. And if you do make them and it's an honest mistake, I'm with you all the way down the line. But if you do something on purpose to hurt somebody, do something like that, then I can't be with you. So, and and when they feel that, because I'll never forget when my father had to go, uh, 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 I got in the thing in the streets and my father said, come on. And he went with me back out the street. <laughs> Boy, look, I knew, that. like I said, I knew my dad, but he just didn't know how to show it. So to me, if, if you don't give the love, that's why I always preface this with being a good father. If you don't give the love, all the rest ain't going to matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I totally, oh, I, I totally agree with that. You know, the love has to be there. You know, but I, I, I you know, t uh, uh, I think the foundation of every, like in my opinion, guys, this is just my humble opinion that every great relationship in the family starts with putting God first. Yes. You know? And if you teach your children that, because I'm not always going to be there. Right. right. And I teach my, I try to teach my children as best as possible. If you have a relationship with God, God is always going to be there for you. That you can always turn to him when I, because someday I'm not going to be on this earth anymore. Right. And if you follow his guiding thoughts, his principles, that'll carry you in life. That's number one. Number two is always take responsibility for what you do. Okay? Right. You know, there's a lot of things that influence life. There's a lot of things that can happen to you that are not fair. But at the end of the day, take responsibility. And number three, take pride in what you do. Whatever you do in this life, it, it tells the world who you are. Okay. So if you work half ass, half ass. All right. Can I say half ass on this? <laughs> um, it tells the world who you are. If you go out into the world with dirty language and and your pants uh, halfway down your butt and your underwear is sticking out. It, it tells the world a little bit about who you are. Yeah. If, if you as a young man are, are impregnating women and you're not taking care of any of your kids, you know, that's a reflection on who you are as a person. Right. And, and, and you don't want that. You don't want that. You want to be able to go out there and give a good account for yourself. You want when people think about you to say, you know what? He's not perfect, but that's a reliable guy. That's a stand-up person. That's a person that, that's a man. You know, he takes responsibility for his family. He's a good provider. You know, he's got a relationship with the creator. He's teaching that. It's a good person. You know, Michael, there's, there's a song that I posted on Facebook a couple of times. It's called That's a Man by Jack Ingram. Mm. And, and, and I think it's so to the point as to what men should be striving for. You know, as fathers, as men, as husband, as providers, 
And and again, I, I again, I, I, you know, I, I want, you know, brother Okim, I think that, you know, we both know that without God or, or, or spirituality, right? Um, it's hard. It's it's hard to teach those lessons. You know, Mike. What what, what do you say, Mike? Well, uh, I I think we, we we got some really great advice here, and and unfortunately, we got just about 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 four minutes, three minutes oh, for wow. each of us. And here's what I want to say. Uh, my ending thought, and I'm going to keep it down to a minute, and we each have to keep it down to a minute. But my ending thought is that a parent should go out there and be critically uh, 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 aware of what they're saying to their kids. Because a lot yeah. of time you're calling your kids stupid. You're saying, you're right. going to grow up to be a criminal. You're going to be a drug addict. You're going to be an idiot. You are, you know, no good. All those little things. We just say it in, in, in the spur of the moment. Maybe maybe we don't even mean it, but the kid latches on to that. And the kid, yeah. you know, uh, you got a lot of, you got millions, tens of millions of people that are sitting in a therapist's chair saying, my dad called me a dummy. My dad called me, you know, said I was going to be no good. My dad said I was an embarrassment to the family. So those little things, I think what we have to do as parents and I'm about to end with this, is start complimenting our kids. Start seeing the good, catching the good, and telling them, hey, I saw that. You did right. that good. Uh, Brother Aki, how would you end it? One minute. Well, I'm going to go right back to where I was at before with the love part, because I grew up in church, and the Bible said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, and because I love you, I got to encourage you. I got to I got to give you the pride in yourself. I got to teach you how to cut to get your hair cut, how to wear your clothes, how to dress, how to talk. Because you know, times have changed. When we was kids, we was taught if you if you curse it because you could you 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 you, you, you was ignorant. You just right, didn't right. find any other word to say. Now it's part of the culture. Uh, I was taught which side of the street to walk on. Kids nowadays don't know what side of the street to walk on when they're walking with a young lady. I was yeah. taught all this, you know. I, I was I was taught to hold the door, open the doors, because my father set that example before me, so I could do it. That's why I say if, if, if the, the, the kid watches the parents, how, how does the father treat the mother? How does the mother treat the father? And we that's. And it's all about that that love issue because if you take love out of the equation, all the rest is going to fall apart. You know what? I, what I would say, Michael, is this, um, and I, I may be offending a lot of people. I would say, forget about all those new age concepts of parenting and whatever. Men are needed in the home. A right. good man, a good father, is needed in the home. Right. And a and a good father should not be afraid to teach his son how to be a man right. and to teach his daughter what to expect from a man. Right. Okay. You have to teach those lessons. All right. Yeah. I know there's a lot of new age stuff, a lot of different, you know, with, with all these movements going on. But at the end of a day, at the end of the day, that man is still needed in the home. You need to be a good, strong figure, but a loving figure. All right. And always keep this in mind. You know, uh, Psalms 127.3 says that children are uh, inheritance from the creator. Right. And, right. And even we have a Native American saying that says that uh, you, you're you basically, you know, that children are a gift from the creator. Gift from God, right. They're, they don't even God. belong to you. They're a gift. They're, they're, yeah, you know, they're, it's they're, a gift. And we have to treat that right. as, as, as that our children are a gift to us. Right. And if you keep that in mind, I think that would help you become a, a, a better father. But at the end of the day, I'm old school, like like brother Aki. You have to teach the young men how to be men, how to be uh, positive protectors, providers and leaders of the family. And you have to teach your daughters how to find the right man, the right. man who's going to be supportive of her, who's not going to be abusive, who's going to be encouraging her and who will be a good father to to their children. Right. What do you say, Mike? I say I love this conversation and I wish we could carry on because there's so much more 
we need to do a part two on this. And yes. for those of you that are looking, please leave us a comment. Put a question up there. Give us what what one lesson, if you could break it down, what one lesson your dad instilled in you. We'd love to hear about that, and we'd love to comment on that. We got Brother Aki from uh, 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 Aki Ahim. Uh, you can find him on YouTube, or you can find him on Reverend Akiahim on YouTube. And we got uh, Sensei Juan of Born to Win Conversations. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, like, comment, and share this video. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Let me say this before you cut off, Mike. Children from a father's homes are twice as likely to drop out from school before graduating. That's how yep. important it is. Absolutely, yep. man. Absolutely. No doubt right. about it. All right, guys. Thank you. All, All right, guys. Have a time. great evening, man. Yeah. God bless. You. God bless you. This was great. Too bad we didn't have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, guys. All right, guys.